Welcome back to another episode of Chelsea Chat with resident Chelsea expert, Jamie Bunce, and myself, Dan Welch, bringing just a little bit of neutrality to, to this pod. Before we get started, don't forget to like, subscribe, and keep commenting, and hit that bell notification to be notified of any future uploads we do have. Right, let's get started. I know we're all eager. There's lots to talk about with Chelsea, but I think we always want to start on a positive note. So, Jamie, let's touch on the Chelsea West Ham game. Three goals, you know, the goals are flowing, clean sheet, you know, things looked a little bit more up. Tell me your thoughts. Um, I wouldn't say it was positive at all, to be <laughs> honest. I mean, the three points, yeah, that was a, that was positive, but the performance itself was just, again, it was awful. Um, I mean, we scored, scored the first goal. Um, and then same old story, just kind of dropped and, and let them come at us. And they looked the more likely to score after our first goal. We were just broke, built like just getting the pressure on us, getting the pressure on us. And then we managed to obtain it and, and got two goals at the end. I think after Tammy got the first goal, uh, his first goal, and that kind of, I think, just pushed West Ham to the side. They kind of dropped a little bit after that. Their, their confidence went and their heads went. Yeah, uh, and that allowed us to get the the third goal. So I think the the scoreline flattered us quite a lot. Yeah. Um. I don't think the performance was great at all. Yeah. Um. But we managed to get the job done, which was obviously at the time that's that's the important thing. Um. Maybe if if the result yesterday went a bit differently, I might have felt a bit more optimistic about the West Ham game. But but um. Yeah. I, even at the time, you know, I I knew uh, it didn't look like we'd improved that much from from the Everton and the the Wolves game. Yeah, I mean, there's an argument of um, it's good to see your team winning when they're playing badly, but I think yeah, for five games and only one win, all competitions is it's not great. Um, yeah, I, I, yeah. So I mean, three goals, two goals for Tammy Abraham, which is which is interesting. I will touch on the Arsenal game in a moment, but. Um, Around the whole strike situation, did you see anything? You know, I mean, we're going to talk, touch on it later, but Tammy's getting the goals, right? But then again, yeah. he's not playing amazingly. Yeah, I think the the issue is um, they're all coming late, firstly. All, the, yeah. all those goals seem to be coming. I mean, it was fine in the, in the West Ham game, but yesterday it kind of it came too late. Um, yeah. I think the big issue for us is that at the moment, we're at that stage where the players are just kind of, I don't know if it's laziness or if it's just a lack of ideas or something, but it seems to be a case of cross the ball, hope for the best. We just, mm. we're not playing through the middle, we're playing it out wide. So we, we always, we go back to the centre-backs. So if we've got the ball in the middle, we'll pass it back to the centre-backs, they'll ping it out to one of the wingers, um, either the full-back or, or the winger, and, and they'll have a, an attempted cross. And it's always going to get cleared because Tammy Abraham is not a aerial striker. He doesn't get on the end of crosses like if it's at his feet if it if it's a low cross or you know even yesterday it came in he chested it in but if it's up in the air even if he wins it he doesn't get it on target he just, he just doesn't score those types of goals yeah. so it you know when we're playing like that you need a Giroud on the pitch um yeah. so it's, yeah and I, you know, you're Tommy's right. doing well yeah. he's doing well with what he's been given but it I, I'd still prefer to see Giroud starting uh going forward uh more, more. I would like to see uh, Werner playing in the middle, um, and that's that's a whole another subject about Werner not being played in the right place. Um, yeah, and and I guess what we'll do is we'll move on from so so Chelsea West Ham. Chelsea won three 0 Didn't play particularly well, but it was a victory, and that's all that matters at the end of the day. But ultimately, yeah, we, we always talk about Chelsea. You know, you have mentioned this podcast for the, the whole time we've been doing this. You've been worried about the Christmas period worry about Christmas break, standard Chelsea slump. But we're in the middle of that and we need to start dissecting exactly what's going wrong. We, we've been seeing the fragility uh, through the Chelsea squad, the, the, the changeover of the team, people not quite fitting in the right places. It seems to be coming to an head now. Maybe it's just simply just that Christmas period, which Lampard was kind of alluding to. But ultimately, moving on to the Arsenal game, 3-1 Arsenal. Score flop flattered Chelsea. However... If Chelsea again would have been a bit more clinical, they could have dragged themselves back into the game, albeit late. Um, yeah. Then again, Arsenal for me, 
two goals from set pieces. I just think there's so much to dissect from this game, Jamie. Yeah. Um, so let's start with... Oh, <laughs> should we, where, do, where do we start? You, you get me to start. Where do we start, Jamie? I don't even know well, I where think to start. The, the, the first thing to say is, before anything else I say, um, <laughs> Arsenal deserved to win the game. Um, in terms of performance, they were the better team yeah. on the day. So everything I say after this is not taken away from Arsenal's yeah, performance. They, they were the better team. Um, when you look at the goals individually, yeah, I would say we didn't defend badly, despite conceding three goals. Um, I mean, the first one was a defensive mistake in terms of giving away the penalty. It wasn't a penalty, firstly. Um, but Reese James put himself in the position to allow them to make it look like a penalty. It would have been a free kick um, outside the box, no? No, no, there was no contact. Um, yeah. So I, what, I, the, the contact was basically Tierney pushed his leg back to make the contact so that he could go down, which I'm not saying is a bad thing to do because yeah. any other player would do that in, his, in that situation. Um, but it's it's just not a penalty. Um, I, I think it, it, James was a bit rash. You know, he'd, he'd let the player go around him and he, he did get a little yeah, bit he got, up to grabby. He I got, mean, you make some argument. It's not a clear and cut penalty maybe you're right but I think that was a defensive error as you, you you've said there yeah he got he got the wrong side um and yeah. he attempted to make a challenge he missed mm. the player and the ball yeah but okay so he made that mistake but it still there wasn't contact for a, for a penalty so yeah it, it shouldn't have been a penalty but it was so they got okay. one nil penalty and, yeah second and that, that's goal good. yeah yeah sec- second goal um just a fantastic free kick um yeah not much you can really do about it. I mean, it was almost top bins. It wasn't quite, but um, it was almost top bins. So it's a great free kick. But was it another uh, seemingly unnecessary free foul? Or uh, not particularly. It was just um, the ball. It was kind of. It looked like a, a 50-50 challenge, but then um, I think it was Saka got there ahead of um, Kante. Kante went to to make the tackle and yeah, you're right. Uh, but Saka got there first, so it, it wasn't a mistake. You know, it was. It looked like Kante could get the ball, but he just got there a bit too late and and made the, the foul. Um, and then yeah, the third goal. I mean, that was let's let's not be around the bush. That was just a fluke because <laughs> you know they. Uh, that that was it was a cross. He just missed it the cross and it flew into the into the top corner. Yeah, even though um, he says that he was trying, there's no way he's trying. For yeah, that. I'm sorry, no, I don't no, he wasn't. believe it at all. And, he was looking up for the player. Yeah, but the, the thing is, all of that said, they should have scored another three, four, or five goals on top of what they did get. So whilst all three of their goals were kind of yeah. weren't because of our defensive like errors, other than maybe the first one. Yeah we still allowed them so many chances and we looked so edgy. Um, I yeah. think the, the first goal, obviously, it changed the complexity of the game completely. Yeah. Um, and then I mean, after I the mean, second, we were just a shell shot. Sorry to, to jump in. The Mason Mount, that could have gone any other way when he took the free kick and, and hit the outside of the post, yeah. right? But yeah, I'm yeah, not saying you're going to win, but I'm just trying to pick out some positives there. Could have changed the game. Yeah, right? I mean, you know, he... That, that could have changed the game. Um, scoring the penalty, we had another five minutes after that, yeah. something might have happened. Thiago Silva had a chance just before that to with a head. Um, any, any, you know, we, we had our chances as well, not as many as Arsenal did, but we had some chances. We could have got back and made that a draw if, if we put away some of those chances. We wouldn't have deserved it's, it at all, but yeah. we, it, you know, this, we, we did miss a fair few chances. What's burning on my mind is you've been talking about it for a while now. It's this. You, you scored, you got the 3-1, and then Chelsea picked up, right? And there was a bit more pressure. And you know what? If that penalty would have gone in, albeit it's late, you never know what would have happened in that game. It goes back to that point. Just not picking your heads up. You're letting... I, far too late. Yeah. We, we left it far too late. Like, well, why, is that, why is that not happening? Where, where's, where's the energy? Why is there no energy? I think the, the part of the problem is the fact that the players are... I don't want to say tired because everyone else is, you know, in the same situation, but they're playing like they are tired. And I don't know if, if uh, Frank's got them, you know, training at a very high intensity, maybe a bit too much. I don't know, but they all just seem exhausted. And then you've got the issue of, you know, players trying to integrate into the league. You've got yeah. the, the case of, I mean, Lampard made so many mistakes yesterday. Um, like the fact that he started Reese James and Chilwell, whilst it felt, I felt happy at the time. 
when you actually watched the game, you could see they weren't ready to come back. Like they were both still injured. Uh, they weren't fully fit. They weren't fit enough to, to play the game. Um, and so I think that was a big mistake on Lampard's part. I know as Pelaqueta is getting a bit on a bit, but he would have, you know, he wouldn't have allowed that, that situation to lead to the penalty. He wouldn't have allowed that to happen. Reese James, if he was a fully fit, Tierney probably wouldn't have beaten him. Like he wouldn't have got around him that easily if, if Reese James was fully fit. So it was a mistake for Lampard to do that. I think the substitutions, um, the only positive substitution for me was bringing on Hudson Adoy for Werner. Um, Werner had a shock in first half because again he's being played out of position, another Lampard mistake. Um, but it's the the Jorginho one, Kovacic, I thought was probably our only hope of actually playing through the middle rather than going down the wings. He's that guy who will get the ball in the middle and drive forward. The others don't really tend to do that. Mason Mount drifts wide. Um, Kante, he's still a defensive midfielder at, at heart. And yeah. Jorginho, I, I, I knew as soon as he come on, I knew the game was over because he's the kind of guy you bring on when you're 3-0 up and you're just trying to kill a game. He's not the guy you bring on when, you need three, when you're 2-0 down. He won't change the game in the way that you need him to. Um, so why, why, the, why, so is that another Lampard mistake? Yeah, that, that substitution was. And the worst one for me, which I said this yesterday, it was, I've never, ever, no matter how bad it's been, even 6-0 down to City uh, at half time or whatever it was, I've never turned off a Chelsea game before yeah. the end. Yesterday was the closest I've ever come when he took off Kante for Havertz. Because at that point in time, especially, they looked like they were going to be scoring more. Like they were peppering us more than we were we were going for for the goals ourselves. And to bring off Kante and bring on Havertz, who's not been in great form, and leave Giroud on the bench, I just I couldn't fathom that so, decision. So the it only... wasn't that that was a, a positive move in terms of bringing on a more forward looking player. It was it's the fact it was the wrong player to bring on at that time. Yeah, yeah. I mean, can, I, firstly, Kante should have stayed on the pitch because. He's the guy that breaks up those yeah. those attacks. And if we were going to be pushing to to win the game, we were going to be leaving ourselves open for a counter, and but it could have been even more embarrassing than it was. So Kante would have been that man to stop it. So we did, we did, but it was because we got that goal. Arsenal started yeah. to shake a little bit. Yeah. Um, and that's yeah, we needed to do that. But Havertz wasn't the right man to to come on and do it. And I know Abraham was the one that got the goal, but. We put in, as I said, we put in so many crosses that Giroud probably would have had a lot more chances to better chances to score yeah. if he was on the pitch. And I'm, the only thing I can think of as to why he didn't bring Giroud on is that he's saving him for the for the Villa game, um, and he will start against Villa. That's the only thing I can possibly think. Um, which I mean, <clears throat> I, I think he could have played as as that, I twenty run, minutes like, or something. Start. No, no, no. I think th that uh, Hudson Odoi might start, but I think. The, the fact that Giroud didn't come on at all would suggest to me that he's going to start the bit again. Because, I mean, it's, it's 48 hours between the two games. Yeah. Like you, It's such a tight turnaround, which it's the same for Villa, don't get me wrong, but um, that that amount of time between games is absolutely ridiculous. So like, It's the whole reason that teams in the Europa League don't play on a Saturday. They push no. it to the Sunday to give them more time. Yeah. But they're putting us on, you know, two, ga two days apart. It's, yeah. it's absolutely ridiculous. But that's, yeah. you know... Lampard had to think about that. I think that's probably the reason he rushed Reese James back. I think that's probably the reason he rushed Chilwell yeah. back is yeah. so that he can rest Azpilicueta and Emerson for them to play against Villa. I think that's a lot of the decisions he made was based on um, the game we have to play tomorrow. Yeah. Um, okay, so, um, yeah. you, you know, early on in that lovely rant, um, it, 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 glad you get things off your chest, Jeremy. It's important. Yeah, need, need to. But yeah. um, we've touched on Werner, right? And a lot of Chelsea fans probably calling for him to be dropped for a little bit. The more impatient ones, shall we say. Uh, he, he's having a bit of a torrid run. Um, even his head seems to be a little bit dropped. But you mentioned that it's a, it's a Lampard mistake and you think he needs to be played through the centre. So talk to me a little bit more. Yeah, I think... I mean, maybe he can play left wing eventually um, with a bit of time and a bit of, you know, um, practice almost. I don't want to say practice, but a bit of you know, getting used to more familiar <laughs> Jamie practice. practice. Jamie get in there, mate. Show him how it's yeah. done. <laughs> but, but he's he's not suited to that to that role. He, 
he doesn't like to to stay wide and then if you tell him to stay wide he stays wide for too long i mean the the him playing there what we want from him is almost the Salah and the Son style of, of winger where, you know, we yeah. you have the, yeah. the centre forward is going to yeah. drop he's deep, not, hold the ball up player. and play it. No, he, he needs to be running in behind you. He needs to use his pace to be running at people. Um, and But the problem is his confidence isn't there. And I think playing him out of position whilst his confidence is so low, is just not going to work. I'd love to see... Uh, two striker system. I'd love to see us try that out because I think if you played like a Giroud and a Werner as a uh, attacking two, like as two strikers, it, it's all, it's almost like going back to the kind of Crouch and Defoe days, like in the Premier yeah, League. Yeah, I mean, look, it's been a while since that, that that has gone, uh, and it, for one for a while it was gone because it just didn't work in the way football was going. But actually, Chelsea, you seem to have a few players that could work that really nicely with Werner and Giroud's strength. I know. I understand maybe Lampard's trying to look to the future here with, with Chelsea, um, mm. which might be his hesitation for Giroud. But but, I, but if he doesn't get into the top four, his job's going to be on the line yeah. a lot. And he needs to think about that as well. So I know it's a, a you know a process and it's a long-term vision, yeah. but the here and now does matter as well. So yeah, he true. needs to be careful and he needs to, you know, that, that long-term goal... He didn't have a pre-season to, to embed yeah. this formation into his team. Yeah. You know, he didn't have that much time. So, you yeah, know, you might have that long-term vision. Like, no one what else I mean is he, he, he didn't need time. to implement that. Yeah, he, yeah. He, he, wanted, he needs time to implement something like that. But if it's not working in the immediate, he needs to change to a, a system that is going to work in the immediate, wait until next year when he does have a pre-season and then try to embed that again. You know, he okay. needs to make um, changes and base it going forwards so, on the immediate here and now. Look, it's all well and good us kind of theorising about where Werner should play. Reality is it doesn't look like he's going to be moved to the centre at all anyway. So what do you, what, what, what should, what should he do? What, because it looks like he wants to stick with that on the wing with Werner, right? For whatever reason he wants to do that. What, what, what do they need to do? Do they take him off then, Jamie? Because he's clearly not going to be moved to the centre. I, th- I think, yeah, he needs to either be playing up front or he needs to be dropped. Um, I don't, I'm not saying, you know, drop him forever. I'm, I think maybe just a couple of games on the sidelines to build that hunger in him. Not, I'm not saying he's missing the hunger, but that pain of missing a couple of games for him might, I think it would drive him on to to really push on. And, and say, it doesn't matter where get, I'm playing, get right? the goals. it's time for me to get yeah. the goals, yeah. Yeah, and yeah. I think, I, I do think he will be a, a striker. I think Lampard does plan for him to be a striker. I think it's just because we're missing, we've missed a few players, you know, a lot of the time uh, this season, we've had a lack of wingers because of injury. Um, you know, Pulisic was out, hudson Doyle was out, Ziyech was out all at the same time. He, he didn't really have a choice but to play Werner there. But like for yesterday, for example, Pulisic um, and hudson Doyle were both back. So he could have you know, started hudson Doyle. I don't, he, hudson Doyle doesn't seem to be in favour at the moment, but yeah. I think yesterday he came on and gave a great performance, so yeah. I wouldn't be surprised to see him starting now and, and potentially you'll see Werner up front with uh, Pulisic on the left. Pulisic is so much better on the left, but when Werner's playing on the wing, he gets pushed onto the right and he doesn't do as good of a job over there, so yeah, um, that's another issue with, with Werner playing on that left-hand side. Yeah. I wouldn't be too devastated uh, against Villa to see um, Hudson Odoi on the right, Pulisic on the left, and Werner up front. Um, but I, I do have a, I, I do think he might give Werner Werner a rest for, uh, for yeah. that game. Yeah, it was quite a definitive. Right, you're going off now, right? You know. Um, okay, there's a couple of things I still want to touch on. Um, there's still lots to talk about with Arsenal. I mean, Arsenal, Chelsea, and just Chelsea in general at the moment. But one is that creativity angle that you brought up, right? And then two is, you, you know, you said the team's tired, but there was some poor defending beyond just your your, your back four um, in terms of willingness to track back in the game as well. Yeah. But first of all, there's that lack of creativity. And, you know, every time we talk with you, Jamie, you're saying you know, Kovacic is really is that only outlet um, in terms of creativity. That That's not good enough. One player to find that creativity, you're never going to get those goals. Where's it coming from? What's the option? I think Ziyech coming back is going to be the, the key. Yes, of course. Um He's that one guy. I mean, Pulisic as well. Um, if you put Pulisic on the left-hand yeah. side, 
Um, even against Wolves, that one really frustrated me because he was on the left-hand side against Wolves and Werner was on the right. And we were absolutely destroying him on that left-hand side. Chilwell, Mount and uh, Pulisic combining was just... Semedo was all over the shop. He didn't know what was going on. He was just getting <laughs> destroyed. And then Lampard swapped Werner and Pulisic and then we just became awful after that. Um, and he's played it that way ever since. And it's just not... It just doesn't work. Um, but yeah, no, Pulisic on the left-hand side, he is that direct route. He creates problems for the defenders. Uh, Ziyech on the other side can create problems for defenders. Failing that, you know, hudson Doy, he can whip in a fantastic cross straight away. As soon as he come on yesterday, he did that. Um, and then I think... Yeah, That's going to when he comes back. Yeah, he, he can play better balls in from deep. He doesn't have to get to the byline like Rhys James. Uh, he, he He's good from, from deep, but he's also a bit more defensively astute as well. Yeah. Um, and I think that leadership he he has as well and that experience will help us. I think he's going to be important. Uh, to, it's, it'll be important for him to play tomorrow against Villa. Um, but no, it, it's the, the creativity was a problem, but I think it was a lot about kind of fight and, and desire yeah. I think the players walked into that game yesterday and just thought, we've won this already. They looked at the team sheet, they looked at the form books and thought, well, this, this is going to be a walk in the park. Yeah. So they thought, we only need to give 70%, save a bit for the Villa game. But it does, football doesn't work like that. Yeah. There's no, even I think Lampard said it, you know, you can't win any game in the Premier League playing at 70%. Yeah. No team can. You have to give everything to win even a point in the Premier League. It's the hardest league in the world. And that's maybe far. the immaturity of the players he's got in that team, not realising that you need to do that, right? And um, yeah. that is, you know, maybe 100%. that's just, they, they need to get to it. And, and it, obviously that shows, right? That um, not fully up for the game, that willingness to track back from all the players. Um, yeah. Uh, it, that, that shows it just wasn't there in terms of, and that's where the opportunities came for, for, for Arsenal. Um, yeah. Yeah. It's it's frustrating. Um, Chelsea need to pick their heads up a little bit more often and kind of be continually in the games. But obviously, you can't argue that they're obviously very tired. Um, yeah. Do you have anything more to say on that game? Uh, I've got lots to say about that game. Come on. <laughs> I think we're running out of time, so uh, let's let's move on. Let's move yeah. on before I uh, yeah. get into another rant. <laughs> Okay, we'll move on. I think to finish that, I think Mendy played all right, made a few mistakes, but was always up for making a few saves. So that's yeah. Least. I mean, he made he made a couple of mistakes, but I think after, I think there was like two kind of powlers, but he made a good save to make up for it on both occasions. So yeah, kind of accept that as long as he makes up for it. But yeah, the 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 third goal maybe he could have done a bit better. Um, obviously it just got looped over his head, but yeah, it's just all right. One of those um, things. Yeah, so Chelsea Aston Villa is tomorrow, twenty uh, eighth of December. Um, really, really, Lampard needs um, a result here. Aston Villa had a good performance against Crystal Palace. I mean, even though they were down to ten men, second half still managed to score two goals. Didn't watch it, but I watched the first half actually. But I'm not sure what Crystal Palace were thinking there. Um, so yeah, if it's not a victory, that'd be six games. Um, what what needs to change? I, th- I just think the I, th- I think things naturally will change. I think he's going to have to go with a different starting eleven because of the tight turnaround in in time. And you said you want Giroud, um, Hudson, Adoy there, right? Yeah, I think. Um, well, as I said, I, I'd be happy to see you know Werner playing through the middle. I don't think he will, no. um, just because of the the rotation he's going to have to do. But I think. Um, I, I I imagine it will be a uh, Hudson Odoi on the right, Pulisic on the left, and uh, and Juru up front. That would be my uh, my guess. Uh, you might see Havertz come in to start this game. Um, still, don't think he should because his form has just been awful. But at the same time, um, Kovacic came on off at half time, so uh, he only played forty five minutes. So he probably he probably can play again. Um, but I also think Mason Mount might need a rest. So it's, I think you'll see a big, big amount of rotation in the team. Um, and I think it's probably going to help, to be honest. Yeah. Um, yeah. Different different heads, a lot more experienced heads coming in as well. Um, as I said, as for Laqueta, a lot of experience there. I don't think you'll see Thiago Silva involved, um, which is a problem. 
uh, I think. I don't think we look anywhere near as good of a team without him in the side. Um, but, I, I, you know, at 37, 38 years old, playing two games in 48 hours, just not possible. Um, but I think the, the you, I think Zuma will still be playing and obviously Mendy. So it won't be too much of a change um, in terms of formation. He he wants that 4 3 free to work, so I think he'll stick to that. But I think you'll see a big rotation in terms of players. Yeah. Um, yeah, I mean, it was just looking at the, the newspapers. It looks like Lampard alluded to Hudson Odoi starting. Um, mm. I, would you, do you dare to make a prediction for this game in terms of the result? Um, I'll never knock back my team. Um, and I, I think this game is critical um, for us because you lose this game and it, come, it goes from bad form to crisis. Um, it's almost that level now um, with the, the games we've played. You know, if, if the, we'd lost the amount of games we had over a long period of time and it was kind of scattered around, it's not so bad. But when it's all coming at once, you yeah. start looking at kind of Arsenal starting to catch you. You know, <laughs> that's like you, you can't have form like this at, in this season of all seasons. You know, you lose one game, you're in a relegation battle you win the next one you're up there challenging for top four it's yeah. so tight in the middle there yeah. um you can't afford to make a mistake and if we lose against Villa we then have to go into a City game with confidence on the floor and that's just going to be a massive massive challenge anyway yeah so off and the back City of, on a you know, really good run of form to be honest with you yeah, and that would be four defeats in five games in the Premier League if we if we lose to Villa, yeah. and then you go in the way uh, you go into play against City afterwards. <sighs> like if we play anything like we did yesterday in the next two games, we are in for a very tough season. Mm. Um, I mean, good yeah, news I is is that past, corner point of the season. Good news is past six uh, matches against Aston Villa, you've won all six. Yeah, that they were very different Aston Villa teams. I think they were. Um, <laughs> That's, that's the problem. They're a very different side now and they've got a lot of threat going forwards. I think Barkley not playing is a good thing for us. Um, I think he makes them better. Um, but, you know, they've still got their danger men in Grealish, Watkins, uh, Triore has been looking good recently, former Chelsea player. Um, but they're a dangerous team and I think we've been lucky not to have to play them so far this season, to be honest, because I think... They they are this season they are the giant killers you know they're they're going yeah, to they are that team. against yeah. all the big teams and they're beating them, um, so it, I'm I'm very concerned I'll be honest I'm very concerned, um, I'm just hoping that this rotation that I'm expecting to see will give us a new kind of uh, psychology for the game you know a different uh, mindset different players to these different offer options different things. I'm hard to see who plays better where so they're forcing him into making those changes which are frustratingly seeing that he's not making yeah yeah and hopefully seeing players play in their better positions you know he might make it might give him a, a miraculous discovery that actually he needs to play a player in their best position to get the best out of them yeah um it's kind of what I'm hoping to see. Yeah if you lose you 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 know you're one of the teams that's played the most games it's that position you currently hold could be a lot worse come those yeah. uh, catch-up games. Um, yeah, look. <sighs> yeah, I mean, we always like to back Chelsea on this podcast. So, I mean, I, I will go for a, a lucky 2-1 to Chelsea just because I like to give a score prediction. Um, but Whenever I say two one, it means that I don't actually feel like we're going to win. But I yeah, back to yeah, so that is it. <laughs> and that that's exactly the scoreline that I'm going to go for. Is it? <laughs> I know it's ridiculous. I need to, yeah. I need, it's so I need stupid, to back my team, it? but it's like yeah, I need right, to back my team, but I can't. Got to back the team, but I can't not have Aston Villa score a goal. <laughs> yeah. It can't be one um, nil because that's never going to yeah. happen. That's too much confidence. Um, yeah. yeah, I mean it's yeah. That's probably why we're so rubbish at these score predictions. But um, <laughs> um, okay, mate. Um, look, if you do win, things look a little bit more up. Um, just need to get over the Christmas break. Is that one positive? It's a usual Christmas slump for Chelsea. I wouldn't say it's a positive. Um, but could it be? You know, no, could it just be the usual year. Christmas slump? 
I hope so. Um, yeah. I hope we come out of it and, and do better. I mean, I think the only two years we've ever not had this kind of form over Christmas was um, title winning campaigns under Mourinho and um, Antonio Conte. They were the only two Decembers that I can remember where Chelsea have actually done all right. Other yeah, than that, I just don't think... Chelsea ever going to win I, the I They do not have, I don't think, do not have a Christmas yeah. I, I just don't think uh, our players like playing in the cold, to be honest. It's got to be that, because that's the only thing that would uh, explain this December curse we have at Stamford Bridge. Mild weather in London. They don't like playing in it. <laughs> no. Um, okay. And then uh, looking even further ahead because of all the games, um, uh, the City game. <sighs> do even, how do you even predict that? Like... City are looking much stronger. Um, not lost a game in in quite a while now. Um, mm. the, the only kind of thing that gives me confidence for that game or any kind of positivity is that we tend to be like the Robin Hood of the league at times, where we take from the rich and give to the poor. Um, you know, last season we went into the, the City the home poor, game. Yeah. yeah, that's what I mean, give to the poor. Um you know, we last season we were in bad form. I think we just lost against uh, West Ham. Yeah. And then we went to we had the City home game with us winning, giving Liverpool the title, and we did it. Um, you know, we played all right in that game. We played well. We beat a very good Man City team, and we we do tend to play well against City at home. It's, that's one kind of positive I can take. But the it's very difficult to see anything other than a City winning that game at the moment. Looking at the way we're playing, looking at the way they're playing, um, it's it's very difficult to to have any confidence. But I'm clutching at straws and saying, you know, we always seem to do well against them at home. Yeah. Um, we we yeah. we seem to be that Robin Hood team, and so maybe maybe we can finally click something together in that game. You now the 2020 will be over, which means we'll be in January. It's not December anymore, so we have no excuse. So let's let's just go in. Yeah, not the December today. That's true. Yeah, yeah. I'll, I'll take a draw though. <laughs> so a, a victory against Aston Villa and a draw, and things are looking more up for for you in terms of Chelsea. Yeah, but that'd be I'd be happy with that. Four points for the in the next uh, next seven days. I'll be happy. Yeah, I think that's that's fair. And then, like you said, Christmas is over, and you can mm-hmm. just look on to to pushing ahead and. I mean, you know, turning our, turning our attention to the, the top of the table, it looks like Liverpool might run away with it again. Yeah. That's it's time to record them. They're one nil up. So. so are they? Yeah. Jamie Mane from Gritty Teeth says that um, Liverpool might win the league again. Um, yeah, no, they, they no, they will for sure. They will. They're again the best team uh, in the league. Uh, comfortably so I can't see they're not as far ahead as they were last year um, but no one is I think you know no one's doing as well as they did last year I don't think I think the other team everyone's backed off but I think everyone else has backed off even more from them right but um, yeah uh, and you know just just to touch on it Lampard's not going anywhere I know uh, Max was getting a bit excited about potential Pochettino yesterday but I think (laughs) Yeah, no. Snake Max. Already looking to the next one. Yeah, no, Lampard's Lampard won't be getting anywhere. I think yeah. um they 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 will give him time. I know it doesn't sound very uh likely for a, a Chelsea manager to be given time, but I think it, it's different with Lampard. I think he was brought in with this long term project in mind. Um we, he'll be judged at the end of the season where he finishes in the league table. I think that's the only thing. I think top four this year is, you know, has to happen. If it doesn't, yeah. then then you might see him be p- packing his bags. But um, he's still got, you know, only a third through the season. Um, everything's still so tight. One win, one, two wins, that changes everything. So um, you can't write anything off at the moment. And I think if he if he loses the next two, um, then maybe you can start talking about his head. But, I think it's between you and United for the top four, right? For the fourth spot, not top four. Um, 
it's start, it's all so close. That's the problem. I mean, you've got Everton in second at the moment. Um, I know. Villa, Villa are up there. I think if they win their two games in hand, they go second. So yeah, yeah. It's all so tight. I would say second, third and fourth are all up for grabs. Um, I think, as I said, I, I still think Liverpool are going to be winning the league. They'll probably win it fairly comfortably again. Not as comfortably as last year, but... I mean, I'm I mean, saying it's going to be Liverpool City and Tottenham and then you guys scrap it out for fourth. Maybe. We'll see how, uh, see how it pans out second half of the season. Yeah. Um, yeah still we'll got plenty of time. Well, yeah. things have changed, haven't they? We were thinking about Chelsea winning the league. Um, uh, Four weeks ago. Yeah. Four games ago. Jeez. Yeah. Okay. Um, yeah. Ah, oh, well... <laughs> I think you held yourself disappointingly together, Jamie. This didn't turn into <laughs> Chelsea fan TV. Um, it would have been a whole different story if uh, we were doing this yesterday, straight yeah. after the game, I tell you. Yeah, maybe we need to uh, change to uh, immediately after the game. Immediate reactions. <laughs> God, no. <laughs> you managed to compose yourself, which is good. Um, okay, guys, that's, that's it for Chelsea Chat this week. Again, don't forget to like, subscribe and comment and keep hitting that bell notification or actually just have to hit it once and then don't touch it anymore uh, to be notified of uh, every time we make an upload. I hope you liked today's uh, podcast and let's just hope that things pick up for Chelsea and let's not forget it is Christmas 2021, better things will come and that does include Chelsea getting a good win if you win under the belt.